Learning how to use Outlook in the most efficient way will save you a ton of time, and it creates space to work on actual work and not just on finding an email or trying to schedule a meeting. The things that end up taking up so much of our time that the tool can do for us. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how you can make the most of Outlook. So tip number one that I have for you all is to color code your calendar. Um, this is something I learned recently. I didn't know that this tool existed in Outlook, or if I did, I never used it. While I'm getting that ready, I do want to mention that if you are new to this channel, it is a completely Microsoft 365 focused channel. So if you're new to this space and you want to get deeper into it and learn how to become a power user, definitely subscribe. We've got SharePoint and Power Platform tutorials along with many other apps. So make sure you're subscribed if you aren't. Now back to Outlook. So I'll show you this quickly with an example calendar here. I am a big Office fan, so I set mine up as if I worked at Dunder Mifflin. Any Office fans out there? So if I wanted to add, let's say an internal meeting, I would go in, I'd add what the, the meeting is. Right now, yeah, we are talking louder. Okay, our prices have never been lower. Son, you have Start to talk louder. Never been lower. Louder, but son! Buttnecker! Our prices have never been lower! Stop. Really, the, the key here is setting up visual cues. So you're thinking about when you visually glance at your calendar, what what type of information are you trying to get out of it? For me, it's really important to know if meetings are internal or external, if they're to do with Project A or Project B, um, or if it's a personal appointment, or if I need to block out some time to get a certain task done. So in our organization, we call that heads down time. So you can come in here to the Categorize button, and this is where you can create all your categories. You can pick any color. Um, through all these options, rename what you want them to be. I've just set up a few basic ones here. Let's say this was an inter internal meeting. So you go ahead and save it. I will say Outlook can be a little finicky sometimes. It will allow you to add more than one category and then I don't really understand how it chooses which category <laughs> it chooses, which color. Uh, so I would suggest how I use it is to just use one category per meeting and that way you can control what the color is going to be on your calendar. So we work with a lot of external partners as well as have quite a few internal meetings. And another key thing is blocking out time these days, right? If you're never able to sit down and actually get work done on your computer, uh, it can be very difficult to get everything done. So I think it's really powerful to block out time on your calendar and it can even give you a little visual break if you're looking and you can think, okay, if I make it to three o'clock, that's when I can finish those tasks. Um, color coding my calendar has really changed the way I view my calendar on a daily and weekly basis. It just has really helped me feel prepared and like I know what I'm going to be doing that day um, in a really quick manner. So I highly recommend it. Tip number two is filing emails by project and or category. Um, I've been doing this actually my entire career, the entire time I've used Outlook. I had a boss at my first job sit me down and explain how to file emails. I do really think this is the best way to do it. Hopefully you're not getting too many emails during the day um, as you shouldn't be internally emailing because there's so many new ways to actually talk with your team other than email that are a lot more efficient. I actually wrote a blog about it, we'll link it here. Um, but we all know we all still email, so hopefully these tips will help you do that in the most efficient manner. So the, the easiest way I've found to fix this is to file my emails by project or by category. So some of the categories I'm talking about here are using things like HR or scheduling follow-up. Um, these are some main practices in my role. Um, I love having an admin bucket so you can just throw anything that might not be super important but you don't want to delete. Maybe this is someone uh, responded to a meeting or calendar invite and you want to keep their reply but it's not necessarily tied to any specific project or work stream. Then you could also actually break out files for each different project and it doesn't completely fix the issue of searching for your email but if you know that let's say that client responded in the last couple days you know you filed it in their project folder it is 10 times easier to find that email in just that folder than trying to flip through your entire inbox 
Tip number three is something I learned when I first started working here at Bulb Digital. I used to be the type of person who would send emails back and forth and back and forth to schedule a meeting. You type something to the client that you're trying to set things up with and they give you some of their availability and then you give them some of your availability and round and round and round and round. Um, and sometimes you end up just calling them to actually schedule, which we all know is just not an efficient process at all. So there is a better way, and one of the tools that offers a better way is called Calendly. And that's something we use here at Bulb Digital, and it has completely changed the way I schedule meetings. It allows you to create an event that you can sync multiple calendars on your side and then send a link to a person or a team of people and then they can choose what best time matches what is available from your team. You can do a one-to-one -one or a group or a collective. There's lots of different options here, but really the benefit of Calendly is that you're opening up your calendar to whoever you're sending the invite to so that they can see what your availability is. And Calendly's really updated a lot of their functionality in the last year. Um, you can set different working hours, you can set different templated when you're available, when you're not, depending on who you're sending it to. Um, so there's, there's a lot of options there. It is something I would highly recommend looking into if you're scheduling a lot of meetings with people outside of your organization and Outlook just isn't cutting it. Our favorite feature here is the collective event type because this allows you to schedule with more than one host. So if I'm scheduling for myself and maybe two or three other team members, it does all the work for you. It syncs all of our calendars, figures out which time all three or four or five of us are available, and then sends those options to whoever I'm sending it to. I don't have to do any of the heavy lifting to figure out when are we all available and then sending that over. So I know this is an Outlook video, but this is one of those pain points that I feel like Outlook really hasn't solved. And so this is a tool that we do pay extra for, but because it solves that pain point, it's really worth it to us and adds a lot of value. Now back to Outlook. Tip number four, setting your out of office message correctly. Outlook does not make this super obvious or easy, and it's definitely one of those things that's the last thing on your mind right before you're going out on vacation. And it's usually the last thing that you want to deal with when you're coming back and you're trying to just jump into work as well. So there's a few tips and tricks to make sure it turns on when it's supposed to and turns off when you're back. So the first thing here on Outlook is that it's not super intuitive where you would find your out of office message. Microsoft refers to it as automatic replies. You go to file and then look for this automatic replies. You can do this on the mobile app as well. When you click into that, it allows you to choose a time range to set when you actually want this sent. I always set it about two hours before I'm actually gonna be out. That way if someone emails me something with an urgent need, they see my out of office, they're still able to get a hold of me with a couple hours buffer. And then I always end it. Uh, either the morning I'm back or the night before. This is the trick. Inside my organization and outside my organization are two different tabs. I don't know why Microsoft hasn't made this more obvious, but a lot of people forget that you actually have to change both messages. If you're doing it on their mobile app, then you can check a box that says make the message the same. But if you're doing it from your desktop, as a lot of people are, it doesn't automatically copy over your message. So most people just change their inside my organization and then whatever was in the outside, maybe from a previous time, will actually be what's sent to clients or anyone who's emailing you that doesn't have your same domain. The best practice here is write your message, make sure you copy and paste it over, set your time range. Once it's actually on, you'll notice that there's a banner that comes up on your Outlook and then you can rest assured that your messages are, are sending out. My last tip for you in Outlook has to do with your email signature. This one is also a bit tricky and Outlook doesn't make it easy to find where you do this. The trick here is you actually have to open a new email to find where you can edit your signature. I don't know why this step throws so many people off. It definitely threw me off for a couple years. I'd always forget when I had to switch my signature, update some information, how you even got to it and ended up having to Google it. So click open a new email, you'll see in the ribbon, right in the middle, you'll see the signature option. 
You can choose from multiple different signatures. You can have a signature that's sent to external parties that might be different to a signature that's sent internally. You can have different signatures and signature styles that are sent on new messages. Maybe on new messages you have a full signature with a lot of information, and then on replies and forwards you have a different um, type of signature. It might be smaller, less information. Um, either way, I've got mine set up so that I reply with my signature on all emails. We're not really about too fancy of signatures. We have pretty basic information in ours, and I can edit it as I see fit. So let's say I wanted to add in the office address here and use this when I'm sending, let's say, to clients or external contacts. One thing to note in email signatures, if you're using a fancy font that most computers don't come by default with, your signature is likely not gonna show up how you want it to look on most other people's computers or mobile devices. So just keep that in mind. At Bulb Digital, we keep it pretty simple. We use very simple email signatures. We just feel like it makes it less distracting when you're actually trying to get the content of your message across. So it's just something to think about. Sometimes it feels like Outlook is a necessary email. Sometimes it feels like Outlook is a necessary evil. Sometimes it feels like Outlook is a necessary evil. I know I look forward to the day that we are no longer emailing and it feels like that might not be that far off. Um, but for now, email is here to stay. Outlook is the main email provider that most businesses use. So it definitely helps to learn the best practices and really start using the tool in the most efficient way possible. So I hope these tips helped you learn how to use Outlook a little bit better and improve your work day. If anything resonated with you today or you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment. We love to hear from you. If you're new to these tools and want to learn more, I wanna let you know about our learning center on our website. So if you head over to bulb.digital and click the learn tab, you can scroll down and you'll see all of these tools and different blog posts we've written about them. Um, there's podcasts and a bunch of free resources so that you can learn more about SharePoint and all of Microsoft 365. We'll leave a link in the description. Lastly, if you lead, an organization and you've always been curious on how your workplace measures up to others, we actually built a free assessment tool, it's basically a quiz, where you can spend a few minutes to get a tailored report for your office across six key focus areas. Head over to bulb.digital scorecard to get started.